Hello everyone, so good to be with you this evening. Got a couple of things I want to talk to you about. A little trouble in my heart just over things that are taking place in our nation and I want to talk to you about it not just from a natural standpoint, but I want to talk to you about it from a spiritual standpoint, from a church standpoint. The responsibility of believers, the responsibility of Christians. And I think we definitely have a responsibility to work in these areas, but uh, take a few moments and join with me. Hello, Laurel. Glad you're here. Jim, thank you for joining with me. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys are a part of this. I really feel like tonight is going to be something that's very important that I share with you. Um, and uh, all of you that are that are watching right now, I just I, I really feel that this is something that we need to talk about. Hey, Brian, glad you're with me this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I just I I'm always glad when you show up. It's just good to see you. Uh, let me take just a second, allow a few more people to show up and get on, uh, because I, I want to talk to you about the condition of our nation right now. But it's not just it's not just that. It's it's. Uh, it's, it's more the responsibility of, of the Christian. What is our response? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of buffaloed a little bit by looking at the response of the church. I mentioned this yesterday just for a couple of moments. Hi, Jana. Um, I mentioned this yesterday is the fact that when the church should be standing strong, they've been hiding in holes. They basically were told, we were asked to help comply with the uh, concern over the COVID-19, which isn't it weird that it's suddenly kind of disappeared all of a sudden. But um, we were asked to do that and to, and to suspend having our services for a little bit. And as a result, the church did. Dear Lord, I mean, I, there's a lot of churches right now that they don't even know when they're coming back. I mean, they're looking at months down the road. I mean, seriously, can you imagine that? We shut down our church because we're afraid of the flu, number one, and uh, we're going to keep it closed until an indefinite time, uh, un until they come up with some type of a, uh, a cure. And I just want to say, they're not going to come up with a cure for this. They may come up with something that helps assist you through it, but they don't even have a cure for the common cold. I mean, somewhere down the line, we're going to have to realize that God created us to overcome. And a lot of things that come on us, like flu symptoms or whatever, we've got to respond by taking care of ourselves, taking vitamins, uh, keep washing our hands. You know, we shouldn't have to be told to do that. Now, isn't that the truth? No one should have to do that. But, but the fact is, is as a result, the church has retreated into what I was calling a survival mode. They're not, not revival. The church no longer was talking about revival. We're going to touch the world. We're going to minister to the lost. We're going to minister to the sick. Anymore, it's just that we're, you know, we're just going to go, go hide in our closet and uh, we'll just send the word and just pray. And, you know, I, and I'm not even saying that that shouldn't be done to an extent, okay? It's to an extent. But more what I'm concerned with is the mindset that has gripped the church where they've stopped being the place of healing and restoration. They stopped that. They stopped becoming relevant. And as a result, all hell has broken loose. Can I just tell you something? The church is the sustaining. You know, the Bible said there in Thessalonians, it said the hinder of lawlessness will hinder until he be taken out of the way. Then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the brightness of his coming. Um, the, the hinder of lawlessness is not governments. The hinder of lawlessness is the church. Now, we are not the bride of Christ at this point. We will make up the bride when Jesus comes and we join with Abraham and David and the saints of old, all those that have been and are yet to come. That will become the bride, but our job description while we're on this earth is we are the body of Christ and we have a responsibility to take care of and to sustain peace and hold back lawlessness. Now, how do we hold it back? We hold it back through our prayer, through our intercession. People can't do that. You know, they're, they're afraid they're going to catch the flu. Come on, guys. Church, wake up. I mean, I mean this, is, this, is, this is ridiculous because right now, our, our president is in, in turmoil. I am horrified as I just see the absolute um, 
dishonor that, that American people have given the president of the United States. You know, I'm just going to tell you something. If you think that doesn't affect you, you, you can't dishonor those that are in authority over you and it not affect you in your life because it is a spiritual principle. It isn't just a thing of saying, well, I, I'm, I'm giving honor to someone, therefore, you know, whatever. I'm just telling you something. Dishonor, especially for those that are in authority over you, will, will, it will position you in a place without a covering. Uh, the, the plan of God and the purpose of God is for you to pray for those, according to Scripture, that have authority over you that you may lead a quiet and a peaceable life. You know, I, I, get, I, I get so amazed the church, they, they act one way in church and then they get out of church and they act someplace else. You know, I see Christians, people who are believers, say they believe in God, and they're out protesting. They're out doing things, saying things that they shouldn't say. In, in, in the church, they're, they're singing that song, this is how we fight our battles, and they're talking about lifting up praise and all of that. And, and then they get outside the church doors and they act like they don't even know who God is. It's no wonder their life is a wreck and they haven't seen anything yet because they're feeding into lawlessness and that lawlessness is going to bring absolute destruction into their life because it's going to separate them from functioning in the kingdom of God. And, and they're going to be operating, even though they love God, they're going to be operating without the power of God flowing through their life. You can't get into that. And we need to be praying right now for those that are in authority. Now, specifically, I want to say concerning the president, he's in a real tug of war right now. I mean, there's a tug of war in the leadership of our country. And I think something we need to pray for is wisdom. James 1.5 says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. See, wisdom is the principal thing, and we need wisdom to know how to, how to solve this horrible dilemma that we find ourselves in this country. We need wisdom. It's kind of like dividing the baby. You remember the story of, of uh, Solomon? There was two women in the, in the beginning reign of Solomon, and somehow they, maybe it was a commune, they all slept together near each other. Well, both women had a baby. Tragically, one of the babies died. That woman took her dead baby and put it in the arms or next to the mother that had the live baby, and she took her live baby. And so they ended up before Solomon saying, this is what happened. She took my baby and gave me her dead baby. And the other one said, absolutely not. This is my baby. That's not, I mean, how do you handle something like that? You need wisdom because you have two forces pulling against each other. And of course, you know the story and it's a beautiful story as to where Solomon said, called for his, his one of his soldiers. And he said, I want you to take the sword and divide the baby, cut the baby in half, give half to her and give half to her. And then he stood there and looked at him. Well, of course, the mother said, absolutely not. Please don't, she can have the baby. The other one said, I think that's a good idea. And he knew immediately through wisdom, this is the real mother. Now see, we need wisdom in responding to the things that's happening in our streets here today. We need godly wisdom because I'm just telling you something. There is, it's not just a natural enemy that we're dealing with, but we're dealing with a spiritual um, component. There is a spiritual enemy at work here. And quite frankly, they've got these guys that are in leadership, specifically the president, that if he doesn't act, he doesn't care. If he does act, then he's a monster. You know, I mean, it's just, they're, they're, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the same spirit that worked in the Pharisees that said, do we give tribute to Caesar or not? Or brings the woman that was taken in adultery and said, this one was taken adultery. What do you say should be done with her? <laughs> and of course, it was the wisdom of God that gave the solution. And I think that's what we need to pray for right now. We need to be praying for the president. 
Now, you might say, well, I don't like the president. Well, let me just tell you something. That is above your pay grade. This is not a matter of if you like the president or not. The bottom line is he is the president. And if you think that lawlessness and rebellion against those that are in authority over you is not going to have a spiritual boomerang that's going to come back around and, and do something in your life, you are horribly mistaken and you understand nothing of spiritual principle and spiritual law. You need to be praying for a president. You need to be praying that God would give him wisdom. Because I'm just telling you, we are dealing, we are dealing with an outlaw spirit, you know, and, and uh, any time that spirit finds leadership, um, well, I mean, you can go back to ISIS. You remember them, a few of the terrorist organizations, uh, every other, they respond to strength, not weakness. And any time the, our leadership hesitates, it's perceived as, as weakness by this aggressive militant army, as well as an aggressive militant spiritual army. When you hesitate, when you draw back, when you're uncertain, the spiritual attack against you intensifies. Mark chapter four made this statement. It said, when the word is sown in the heart, Satan comes immediately to steal the word. And he uses affliction, persecution, cares, pressures, anxieties, fear, all of these things to enter in and choke the word. Well, let me just tell you something. That's, that's militant. And that's what we're dealing with. And what he does is he's got most people in retreat to where they can't stay on the word in five minutes to even believe that God's actually going to do what he said he would do. And whenever you find a lawless spirit at work in our communities, it must be dealt with. It must be stopped. You know, I, I know that a lot of people are, are uh, protesting because of the treatment of... Uh, uh, of the police officers in, in way too many cases. And, and they should, they, they should stand up and say, this is not what we want. Now it's unfortunate because I hear people make the statement, they say, this is never gonna happen. We're gonna stop this and the, we're, no more. And I understand that, but the fact is, is that's not even realistic. You know, just because you're standing up and, and saying uh, this must stop, uh, you're never going to eliminate prejudice from the hearts of mankind because I'm just going to tell you right now, the heart of man is desperately wicked. And if you think that selfishness is not at the heart of all that they do, you're mistaken because I'm just telling you right now, that is the very thing that drives the wickedness of men is selfishness. And selfishness is actually the opposite of love. You have love operating on this side, selfishness operating on this side. And you have to understand that that's the motivation for everything that takes place in your life. And you, you can't allow that to, to be a part of your life. You, you can't allow yourself to be aligned with, this, with these with situations because prejudice is always going to be there. And let me just throw something else in there just for you guys too. I'm troubled at the, at the loose way that the term racist is used. If, if, I, I feel like that's a word that has been so overused that it's kind of lost its meaning. I heard some woman the other day, she made a statement. She said, all Republicans are racist. Well, define that. What, what does that mean? See, it's just what it becomes is just a, a word to use against somebody that you're actually taking the value of the word away that when you do use it, that it means anything. Because uh, I don't believe everybody is racist. I, I don't. I know that there are definitely racist people, but I don't think everybody and everything is racist. Now, I do believe that there's a lot of prejudice against other people. We usually have prejudice against people we don't understand people that we're not with. We find ourselves, when we become afraid of people many times, you become prejudiced. You, they're different than we are. We become prejudiced. But I, I encourage you to back off that word racist because 
it truly does devalue the power of what that word means. And, and so anyway, back to my point is the fact that what we're dealing with, and I'm speaking specifically to who I believe is, is Christian people. That's, that's who I'm, I'm trusting that I'm speaking to. And uh, those of you that maybe are not, well, you can listen to me anyway, but I'm specifically because I want you to understand something that what we're dealing with is not just flesh and blood. Here we're dealing with principalities and powers. There is a there is literally a spirit of lawlessness that is at work in the land. You know this 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 poor man that was murdered in the, in the streets. That was horrible. I mean, it broke my heart. I thought that that should not have been done. That should not have been done. Uh, maybe he broke the law, but it wasn't a violent law. Neither was he a violent person. He wasn't, but he unfortunately got caught by people who did not respect him. Were they prejudiced? Yeah, I would say they were. Racist? I don't know that they were that, but the fact is that this poor man died. And so the result is, is that people have been protesting to say, we won't change. I totally agree with that. But I want all of you that are even in the protest camp, I want you to understand you're being hijacked by a by a spirit that doesn't want anything but destruction for this country, for America. Uh, you know, they're talking about this group Antifa. There's whatever name that you put on it, there is a spirit at work in this country that has, that has truly set itself to bring destruction, to tear down, to destroy, to tear, you know, just to completely, and, and as the church, you cannot, you cannot allow this thing to happen. I'm very disappointed at the governors and the mayors and the different places in the country that's allowing the lawlessness to go. Because I'm just going to tell you right now, where I see the lawlessness going is I remember, I remember when I was, a, golly, I was, I must have been about probably 15 years old. Uh, I was just a kid and I was, I was waiting on somebody and I had a box of matches. Now what I'm doing with a box of matches, I don't know because I didn't smoke. I don't know, maybe I was trying to smoke or something like that, but I had a box of matches. And I took this match and I struck it and flipped it, nothing. I took a match and I struck it and flipped it and it caught fire there a little bit. And in the matter of, in a millisecond, in the matter of a second, it went whoosh, and suddenly I realized, oh my God, we got a problem here. And I'm running around trying to stand in this, what became a three foot circle, a five foot circle, an eight foot circle. I am running like a madman trying to stomp that out because what started as a spark, when it was allowed to go and it was given fuel, it, it exploded in every direction. Fortunately, fortunately, I was able to get it out uh, after much work and much panic. I'm just telling you, I needed oxygen by the time I finished that. It was terrible, but that's exactly what's happening. When these leaders give place to this, that's what happens. It explodes. Can I just say this to you? As a believer, as a Christian, when you give place to things, it starts like that match. Uh, James made this statement, behold what Great a matter, a little fire kindleth. One match, just one spark, will will ignite something that immediately gets out of control, and that's what's happened. Things have gotten completely out of control, and and this is the time for the church to 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 get in their place. Wake up, for God's sake, come out of the closet and start praying. Come out of the closet where you're hiding from the virus and begin to speak the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over these situations to where you begin to, through prayer, take authority over this. Repent, call upon God. Second uh, Corinthians, not Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 7, 14. 
What did it say? If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, I'm going to hear from heaven and I'll heal their land. See, that's your responsibility to pray. You can look at everybody else and think, oh, dear God, they're all going crazy. What's the matter with all the world? Well, I'm just going to tell you, the solution isn't going to be just the fact that I get you in a headlock and refuse to let you up, although we need some severe uh, uh, law enforcement. But the responsibility of truly making the change is in the church. Because what's happening right now, this, this, this protest has left the protest. It's not about the protest anymore. It's not about this man anymore. What it truly has become, it's become spiritual and it's driven by something that is more than its original intent. Whatever the original intent was, which was certainly to say, I disagree with what's been done and I want changes to be made, but that's been hijacked by a spiritual outlaw that is trying to bring destruction to everybody that is concerned. And, and so I, I wanna just say that, that the, the answer to what we need um, is to many people is not what they want. Matter of fact, they don't even know what answer they want. They want an answer, they're demanding an answer, but they're not even sure what that is. Can I just tell you this? What the, what the answer is, is that the church needs to come together and they need to pray and they need to seek God about this thing. And then they need to, through the authority that was given them through the name of Jesus, they need to break the back of this spiritual outlaw that has found its way into our country and refuse to let that be a part. I refuse to let that be a part. And, and you need to not be passive. You got friends that says, well, I disagree. You need to be bold enough to tell them. If they are your friend, you need to be bold enough to tell them, say, you need to be quiet about this because you're out of line. You're out of order to criticize, to condemn. We don't need more criticism right now. There's been enough of that. There's so much criticism that people are choking on it. It's not, it, it has no effectiveness right now. Right now, it's, it's not bringing a change. It's just noise. It's, it's producing nothing. But you need to make sure that you're getting yourself in line and you need to begin to maybe fast and pray and begin to speak the word over this situation. Again, this thing has come to the place, and I really feel this so strong, this thing has taken on the nature of being a spirit and not just natural. In other words, the motivation behind it, the, the engine of this is no longer, and, and hatred does that. Hate, hatred does that. Offense does that. Wounds that do that. It opens the door. That's why it's so important that you not allow offense in your heart. Now, I'm not saying except things that are not right, you need, to, you need to correct things that are not right. But there's a difference in you bringing order and as the Bible says, to rebuke and exhort. You need, to, you need to be involved in that. But don't let offense into your heart. Don't open the door to that because we truly are dealing with evil spirits. We're dealing with principalities and powers. And we're going to have to we're going to have to start moving toward revival. We are. I I am not going to be somebody who just sits and says, "Well, the church is in trouble. The church is going down. This country is going down. It's not going down. We're not going to let it go down. God's not done with this nation yet." I mean, there's a lot of people that hate America, and I'm just thinking, those of you that hate America, you need to catch a slow boat to China or some other place. I mean, you need to. They no place. Like, God has blessed us to have this wonderful, wonderful nation. Do we have problems? Yeah, we got some problems. Do we have knuckleheads? You better know we do. I, I am telling you right now, we've got some people that I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. But I'm not going to let that hijack this wonderful nation out of my hands. So I just want to say to you today, this is the time for you 
to not complain, not find fault. You need to put a watch over your mouth. Stop talking about who you don't like this one. And I think that's a, you know, I don't like the president. Thank you so much for your help. Now we're, now we're much better now that you've shared that. Really? I mean, we, we be constructive or get out of the way. I, be part of the solution or go sit on the bench. You're, oh, you're sucking up air, man. You are, you're preventing us from accomplishing what needs to be accomplished because every time we get this thing moving in the right direction, you get that negative thing. Well, I don't like this. Well, I think, I think, you know, you're not smart enough to be thinking right now. You, you need to be praying. You need to be asking the Lord to come in and do some things. You need to be praying that the ministering angels of God would go and, and would begin to protect people and the leaders, whether it be the leaders of Oklahoma or Alabama or Tennessee or Texas or Washington, D.C. You need to be praying for those that are in authority over you. And, 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 uh, and, and if you can't do that, then you just need to learn the vocabulary of silence and just, just be quiet. And that's just, um, that's my take on it. That's, that's what I think. But I'm, I'm, I love this country. I, I love America. What a, what a privilege to be here. What a privilege to be here. And, and I want right now to call you to take your position as a problem solver, as a healer, as a deliverer, as an encourager as someone who demonstrates what Christ is really like, as someone who actually believes that the New Testament's true and walks in accordance with it. You, got to, you are called to a higher calling. And, and if you cheapen yourself and lower yourself just to become partisan, then you will have boarded, aborted the opportunities that God really has for you. And I mean that. So come on, church, get off the bench. Get off the bench. Stop being cowardly. Stand up and take the word of God and declare it to be so. Speak what God has said about you. Get in the game. We've got a lot of work to do, and you need to make the decision that you will not tolerate hatred you will not tolerate division. You will not tolerate the noise, the clamor that comes from people who sit in the cheap seats and make criticism over the way they think it should be done. Listen, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you right now. Sometimes until you're the one in the, in the hot seat, until you're the one that's carrying the load, Sometimes you don't know how you're going to act. And I, I just really feel that we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. This, this coronavirus has lulled us to sleep. This coronavirus has caused us to go and we even quit having church. <laughs> Come on. We, we're going to pull ourselves together. Let's wake up and be the church. Whether you have the church, I don't know. But be the church today. And let's see something good happen, okay? I want you to stay in touch with me. Let me know that you're praying with me about this thing because I really would like to know, I'm, I'd really like to, I start saying know how you feel about it, but it doesn't matter how you feel about it. This is truth. And you need to speak the word over it and you need to stand with that word, sword of the spirit in your hand, the shield of faith. <laughs> Dear God, man, I'm telling you something, we're gonna do something incredible in this earth with a kingdom of God in the days to come. I mean that. God's that move in our lives, and I believe we're going to come into the, one of the greatest seasons of revival that the earth, is, that the church is going to shake itself and stand up and be the church. How exciting, how exciting. Hey, I want you to, I want you to please stay in touch with me. You can go to my website, our church website, FWC Elgin, that's for Family Worship Center, FWC Elgin, E-L-G-I-N, FWC Elgin.com. 
and I've got all kinds of resources, ways that you can contact me there. We even have a phone app. Those of you that would like to have our phone app, you, you certainly can, can get that. But it'll give you ways that you can send for prayer requests, get our resources. And those of you that want to be part of the, that want to give of maybe your tithing or donations, you want to give them to the church, uh, I, I think it's something that this is a time that the church needs uh, resources because we're going to do some things. I'm just telling you something right now. We're, we're going to, you know, it's kind of like what, they, what the Lord said to Peter when he's asleep up on the roof. He said, rise, kill, and eat. <laughs> oh, that's what we're going to do, man. We're moving forward. We're going to reach out and do something great. So I just want to say thank you for those of you, like I said, who give of your tithing. And those of you that want to give donations, please, please uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, I look forward to hearing for, from you. You can do me a favor here. Please push like, if you would, and share. It's, it's so important. Uh, um, because it gives me an opportunity to share this, what I'm saying, not just on my feed, but it will take it on your feed and someone else's. And I think right now what I'm saying needs to be heard by the church, okay? If you would do that for me, I would appreciate it. Please leave a note. Let me know what you're thinking. And uh, I'm so glad to see you guys. Hey, Lisa, thank you for joining with me. I'm so glad. Della, thank you for joining me. You guys are so close to, so close to my heart. Uh, I appreciate you standing with me. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'm going to be back tomorrow at the same time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you then, okay? See you, Jenna. Good night. Bye, Charles.